So I was supposed to get married last week, but unfortunately it didn't happen. I pulled off a pretty gutsy stunt in front of all my friends and family, and now my ex-fiance's family and my own family are both extremely upset with me. For context, my fiance, Chelsea, 26, female, and I, 28, male, had been together for the past three years. We met through friends, and even though we knew that we were very different from each other, we hit it off, and after dating for a year, she moved in with me as well. We were getting serious, and eventually we had a talk about our future, and we decided that we were sure about each other. We agreed that we wanted to marry each other and start a family before 30, and she also made it known to me that after having kids, she didn't want to work anymore. She wanted to devote her time to her children and would be a stay-at-home mom. I was completely fine with that because I work in a tech company. I make good money, so I believe that I would be able to support my family. And Chelsea was not going to quit her job until we had our first kid. So I had assumed that since she would be working until then, we would also have saved enough money together. This is why I don't understand why she came up with some stupid contract, which she wanted me to sign and agree that I would give up 40% of my income every month and transfer it to her account so her future would be secure. As if the contract was not bad enough, she decided to spring it on me about a day before the wedding knowing that I wouldn't be able to do anything at the time. It was just the way she had been so sneaky about everything that ticked me off. Because I had proposed to her almost 10 months back, so she had had almost a year to tell me about her plans. We could have discussed this, I could have spoken to her and we could have come to a common ground, but instead she tried to deceive me. The day before the wedding, my mother-in-law, Donna, decided to visit me in the evening with the contract. After she showed the legal document to me and explained it all, I couldn't believe it. I thought that it was Donna trying to pull a fast one on me, so I decided to go speak to Chelsea about it in person. Donna and I went to her room to settle this, and that's when Chelsea told me that this had actually been her idea and my world came crashing down around me. She told me that she had been thinking about this for a couple of months leading up to the wedding, and because this was kind of sensitive, she couldn't think of an appropriate way to bring this up. But now, apparently, before she committed to the wedding, she wanted me to sign this contract of hers so she would have some sort of financial security. I was obviously very upset. I tried to reason with her because it was literally the day before the wedding and I couldn't think of any other way to deal with the situation. I tried to tell her that 40% of my income is a lot of money and since she wouldn't even be quitting her job until she had her first child, I couldn't understand why she needed this so quickly. I also couldn't understand why she had drawn up legal paperwork for something like this because it just made me feel like she didn't trust me. We had an argument and she told me that I was reading too much into this and I was upset with her because she had been very sneaky about this whole thing. After a while, she put her foot down and she told me that she was not getting married if I did not sign that contract and that was it. So in the heat of the moment, I decided to just put on an act and I smiled and signed the contract and then I left and went back to my room without another word. But I was obviously not done with it. I was hurt and I felt betrayed and so I decided that I was going to address this at the wedding in front of everyone. I don't know if it was right or wrong. I guess I'm going to find out from the comments but at that point, I just wanted to humiliate Chelsea and her mother because I was incredibly disappointed with both of them. Anyway, the next day, everything went smoothly up until the point at which we were supposed to be at the altar. She said her vows 
and I was supposed to say mine, but instead I brought out the contract from my pocket and I read it out to everyone publicly. Obviously, everyone was very confused and I could see Chelsea going red in the face, but I didn't stop. I went on to explain the contract to everyone and I told them that this wedding was no longer happening because obviously Chelsea did not trust me. And after what had happened the previous evening, I did not trust her either because she had chosen to be sneaky with me and tried to trick me into committing to something like this instead of doing the normal thing, having a discussion with me and coming to a conclusion that both of us found acceptable. After a relationship of almost three years, if we couldn't even trust each other, then there was no point in getting married and, and ruining each other's lives. And after that, I tore up that contract into as many pieces as I could and then walked out of the venue without even looking back. I got into my car and since I had already packed my bags and put them in my trunk, all I had to do was drive for a while and find a different hotel. And that's where I have been staying since. Both our families pretty much lost their minds after my stunt at the wedding and have been going off about it. Apparently, the situation after I walked out had been predictably chaotic because Chelsea broke down into tears and her family started trying to comfort her. And my family started trying to do some damage control with the guests and stuff. Once the situation had been brought under control and most of the guests had left, our families had a long discussion and both of them had agreed that what I did was completely unnecessary. Even if I did not want to marry Chelsea after finding out about the contract, I could have just told her about it and avoided all that drama. They said that the fact that I even had a chance to sleep on it and do the right thing, but I had chosen to humiliate Chelsea publicly and make our families the laughing stock of all the guests present at the wedding. And apparently that makes me even worse than Chelsea. Because at least what she had done had only hurt me. But what I had done had hurt Chelsea, her family, and even my family. So now they want me to issue a public apology for my behavior and tell people that I've been going through a lot of mental stuff, which is why I did that. I don't think that's fair though, because I haven't been going through a lot of stuff. I just thought that what Chelsea and her mother had tried to do was disgusting and I didn't like it. Yes, I will admit that what I did was dramatic, theatrical, but I cannot say that it was an overreaction. I think she totally deserved it. And I really don't understand why my family thinks that this ruined their reputation or why they think they have a reputation that can be ruined in the first place. Because as far as I know, we are really not that important. People will gossip about this for a couple of days and then forget about it. But at least I will have the satisfaction of knowing that I got back at somebody who tried to screw me over for the rest of my life. And if not the satisfaction, at least I'll have a cool story to tell people. But the truth is, I don't do it for either of those reasons. I just did it because I was very upset that almost three years of my life had been completely wasted with Chelsea. And honestly, I do want to get married and start a family. Now, I'm going to have to start all over again with somebody else, and I don't even know if it's going to be the same again. I'm also very upset about a lot of other things because I really loved Chelsea. And I still have a soft corner for her, which is why I'm even bothering to rethink what I did. Anyway, since almost a week has passed since the incident, I've started to have second thoughts, but I still don't feel too inclined to, to publicly apologize to anyone. AITA for not wanting to publicly apologize after I humiliated my ex fiance her family and even my family at our wedding, which never ended up happening. Edit. Just to be clear, I don't have a problem with the fact that she was demanding money for her future. I think that was pretty clear. I had mentioned it in the beginning that she had told me she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom after she had kids, and I was completely cool with it. In fact, even if she had come up with a prenup or something, I would have been fine with that too. 
All I had wanted and expected from her was an honest and upfront discussion about all this. It's not like we have never spoken about finances. We have been together for three years and have lived together for two. Of course, we discussed our finances and we had always had a clear line of communication with each other, at least about these things. I really can't understand why she couldn't feel comfortable enough to bring this up with me in the past. It's not like I had ever given her a reason to doubt me either. And unlike what a lot of you are suggesting, I'm not even actually that mad about the fact that she demanded a part of my salary for herself. But the fact that she wanted me to start sending her money right after we got married did not sit right with me because as far as I was concerned, I had believed that she would only quit her job after we had kids. Then, of course, it would be a different story because our living arrangements would be much different. But for now, we could have just stuck to whatever we had been doing for the past two years. I know that I am a bit all over the place right now, but honestly, this really hurts. I've tried my best to be a good boyfriend to her and always respected her decisions. And to find out that she had tried to deceive me and trick me into something like this, it's just weird. There was no need for it. And I don't understand why she ruined everything that we had with this contract situation. Anyway, the damage has already been done now. And right now, both our families are against me, and she hasn't even bothered to speak to me ever since I walked out. I don't even have any expectations from anybody at the moment. I'm just hoping that this blows over soon and I can start trying to move on from everything. Update one. Hi, thanks for all the comments and advice. It's been a couple of days since I posted and I have not made up my mind about what I want to do yet. I'm definitely not apologizing to anyone, that's for sure. I haven't spoken to Chelsea or her family because I really don't think that I owe them an answer. I'm not married to Chelsea. They are not going to be my in-laws anymore. And as far as I'm concerned, we are done. I don't think there's any chance of us ever patching up again. So we are over for good. And that just leaves my family to deal with. So that's the only thing I cared about. I had been ignoring them for the last couple of days because I didn't know what to say to them. But then yesterday, I finally spoke to my parents. I wanted to speak to them in person, but they couldn't make the trip. So we had to have the conversation on FaceTime. I explained my situation to them. And while talking to them, I actually ended up finally crying about it. I have been holding back my feelings for the last week, ever since the incident took place. And I guess that finally made them realize how shattered I was. And they started trying to comfort me. They finally started to try and understand where I was coming from instead of constantly attacking me, telling me that I had ruined the reputation and all that. I talked about my feelings to them and I told them that I knew for a fact, what I had done, maybe it was unnecessary, but at least I got the satisfaction of knowing that at least I had done something. I hadn't let her walk all over me. And even if it was petty, I needed that. I didn't care what other people thought of me. It only mattered what the people I cared about thought. I hadn't spoken to any of my friends, but I knew that they were with me on this one, thanks to all the supportive messages and emails that they had left for me. So that only left my parents. I told them that I really needed them to be by my side because I was going through something really difficult. And I even told them that I could understand where they were coming from as well, as they were concerned about our family's reputation. But I also explained that we are not exactly public figures. People are going to gossip about this for a while, but then they're going to move on to the next big thing. Being afraid of people gossiping about us is no reason for them to be fighting with me, especially when I need them the most. And when they finally understood that, we were able to clear the air. TLDR, my parents and I were able to come to a common ground and things are fine between us now. Update two. Hi, it's been three days since my last update and yesterday, really late in the evening, I made up my mind that today 
I was going to go back home. After all, I paid half of the rent too, and honestly, I couldn't afford to stay in the hotel forever. I had to go back at some point, and I think Chelsea should be the one who has to leave. I don't understand why she hasn't bothered to contact me at all, but well, I packed my stuff up and I went back home this morning. Ever since the incident at the wedding, it had only been Chelsea's parents who had been trying desperately to get in touch with me, but she hadn't said anything. So I had been quite nervous about showing up at home because I didn't know what to expect. I did have my keys with me, so I got them just fine. And surprisingly, when I walked in, I realized that the place was a lot emptier than before. And after walking around for a bit and looking at stuff, I realized that Chelsea had moved out. And she hadn't bothered to say anything to me, probably because she didn't want to talk to me. I couldn't understand that. And it was completely fine with me. I didn't have anything to say to her either, but I was just glad that she had moved out without me having to tell her. And now I could stay in my own home without worrying too much about the arrangements. I don't know where she went. I'm guessing that she moved back in with her parents or maybe a friend, but it doesn't matter anymore. It has been a significant amount of time since the wedding and now that I was back in the comfort of my own home, I decided to start replying to everybody who had texted me. Until now, I had only spoken to my parents because I didn't want to talk to anybody else. Frankly speaking, I wouldn't even have spoken to my parents if they hadn't been offended by my actions at the wedding and I had to fix things with them. Anyway, I started responding to messages and emails and stuff and I told my friends how I was doing. Most of them were concerned about me. None of them really brought up Chelsea at all because I guess they didn't want to bring up anything sensitive. I told them I was doing better now, which is not exactly entirely true because I'm still struggling to fall asleep at night and come to terms with the fact that Chelsea is truly gone now. But it's not like they can do anything about it, so that's what I'm going with. Anyway, I'm trying to get back to normal because I've gone back to work. I'm working from home right now because I really can't face my co-workers after the fiasco at the wedding, even though they told me that they totally understand and they're not going to judge me. But I guess I just need some more time to accept things myself. Anyway, at least I've come back home. That's a big move by itself too. Baby steps from here on. Update three. It's been three weeks since the wedding and until now I haven't been responding to Chelsea's parents. They have been texting me non-stop trying to get through to me about something or the other, but I really don't want to talk to them. I haven't even been reading those messages because I was sure that it was all pointless. In the beginning, they wanted me to issue a public apology for my behavior at the wedding, and I just assumed that given the recent messages, that's what they would be going on about since they still haven't received what they want. But today, they actually showed up at my house and started demanding that I speak to them. And I was kind of alarmed, but I decided to talk to them and get it over with once and for all, because this was starting to get on my nerves now. So I asked them what they wanted, and they told me they wanted me to repay them the amount that they had contributed to the wedding. I was shocked, because that was a pretty bizarre request, since as far as I was concerned, the wedding had actually taken place, and it's not like we had cancelled anything. And our families had contributed to the wedding equally so I couldn't understand why they were demanding money from me. I obviously made it very clear to them that I was not repaying anything to them and told them to get away if that's what they were here for. But they told me I was being unfair because they had spent a bomb on the wedding as well, but because of me, it had all been ruined. So now I owe it to them to pay them back because it was my ego that had ruined everything. They even said that unlike my family, they couldn't afford to throw that kind of money away. And since I had been responsible for the wedding getting called off, I had to do the right thing now. The way they were accusing me of being egoistic and putting the blame on me just made me really upset. Besides, I haven't exactly been doing well for the past couple of weeks, so I lost it at them. I stepped out of my house and started screaming in their faces that they were really shocked by this behavior, but I couldn't care less. 
I just went on and on. They had messed up by trying to kick me when I was down already. I told them that it was not my fault that their daughter didn't have the guts to come and talk to me like a normal person and had to spring the contract on me like a surprise at the very last minute. And if they really didn't think that there was anything wrong with that, either they had very screwed up definitions of right and wrong, or maybe that's just how their family was. They functioned like that and expected me to adapt to it. But I'm sorry. I'm not one for deception and I don't take it kindly either. I also told them that I had always treated Chelsea with love and respect. But the night before the wedding, when I confronted her about the contract situation, I realized that if I did end up marrying her, it would be the biggest mistake that I ever made. And I'm really happy that I decided to walk out. And if they really want to talk about ego, they should probably go ahead and talk to their daughter about it because she's the one who ruined everything with her ego. Even the evening before the wedding, it would have been very easy for her to just apologize to me and we could have talked things out. I was ready to do that for her because we spent a lot of time together. We know each other really well and I wasn't willing to give up on us. But clearly, she was willing to do so because she had clearly said that if I did not sign that contract and get married to her on her terms, then she would not get married at all. So naturally, it was clear that her ego was more important to her than getting married to her fiancé. She's the one who ruined everything and Donna was the one who stood by her every step of the way. As for the money... I didn't even owe them a penny because it had been their choice to contribute to the wedding expenses. Nobody had talked them into agreeing to it or forced them to do so. So to ask me to repay them and bring my family and stuff was completely unnecessary. They were just trying to create drama out of nothing and I was not going to have it because their daughter has created enough of a nuisance in my life already. I don't need more. After I was done screaming at them, they tried to argue, but I wasn't in the mood to have it. So I walked back inside, slammed the door as hard as I could and told them to get the heck off my front porch or there would be serious consequences. They decided to take that seriously, finally, and got back into their car and drove away. Once that was done, I took a couple of minutes to calm down and then I decided that I was going to have to speak to Chelsea about this because this sort of behavior was completely unacceptable and she needed to bring her parents under control. I had no idea if they had shown up with Chelsea's knowledge or not, but I still called her up and that was the first time that I spoke to her since the wedding. She didn't answer the first few times that I called her, but when I didn't stop, she finally picked up and she sounded pretty annoyed. But then before she could say anything to make the situation worse, I decided to fill her in on what her parents had just done. I told her how they had shown up, blamed me for everything, and we had just had a shouting match with each other. From her reaction, I guess that she had no idea about this. And after I told her everything, she immediately started apologizing to me and dropped the annoyed act. She told me that she had no idea that her parents were going to do something. She was at work and she had already tried to tell her parents not to bother me after they started bombarding me with messages and phone calls, trying to get me to apologize publicly. She said that he was not even on board with that and had told them not to bother me anymore, but they hadn't stopped and she felt terrible about this. It was obvious that she was quite embarrassed, so... I didn't want to make her feel worse, which is why I just told her that it was fine. They had shown up today, but after this, I wouldn't want them coming around anymore, and I hoped that she would understand. She agreed, and we were silent for a couple of minutes before we ended the phone call after saying goodbye to each other. Of course, there were a lot of things that we did not say, but it made me very emotional to hear her voice after so long. I don't know if it was the same for her or not, but... I know that I felt kind of strange. At least this conversation did not end on a better note and we did not bring up anything that had happened in the wedding. But it's not like we don't need to talk about it and address that at some point. I don't know why, even though we have broken up for good. 
I feel like I still need to talk to her and get some closure. I mean, after being together for three whole years, I think that's the least that we can ask of each other. But this conversation was nice too. I just really hope that she reaches out to me at some point later on and we get to talk about whatever had happened at the wedding. Anyway, until then, I'm going to continue trying to move on. I've started planning out what I want to do for the future because now that all my plans for the past three years have been derailed, I need to think of something so I don't lose hope. I've been thinking about starting my own business and in a couple of days, I'm going to talk to my father about it and get him to come on board as an investor or something. I'm hoping that things go well. Let's see. I probably won't be very active in the next couple of weeks unless something worth mentioning happens. So until then, goodbye and thank you for all the advice and support. Update four. Hi, three months have passed since my last update and a lot of things have changed. Last month, I finally quit my job and started working on my own business. I've made some progress and hopefully I'll be ready to start in the next few months. Of course, I'm getting a lot of help from my dad and it's nice to see that we have bounced back so well from our last disagreement from the time of my wedding. We hardly even remember it anymore and I'm on good terms with my parents. And Chelsea's parents haven't bothered me ever since that last fight either, so that's great. I'm getting back to normal now. I'm spending more time with my friends and family and obviously nobody brings up Chelsea or the wedding, but they do try to be more gentle with me. I'm not complaining. I guess I could deal with that. And as long as they are not pitying me, I'm fine with it. Now, coming to Chelsea, I had said that I would like to get closure from our situation and that finally happened two weeks ago. It was completely unintentional. I was just at a bar with a couple of my friends and she happened to be there too. But she wasn't out with her friends. She was out with some guy. And initially I thought she was out on a date. So I was very upset. I didn't go up to her for that reason, even though I had spotted her and nobody else had. But before I left, she came up to me after she had seen me there and she told me that she wanted to speak to me. By then, the other guy had left and she explained to me that she was not out on a date. That guy happened to be a family friend and he was waiting for somebody else because he had traveled here to meet his long distance girlfriend for the first time. She was just with him for company. I felt much better after that explanation and it also made me realize that I still had feelings for her somewhere deep down. But I'm not going back. Don't worry about that. I don't think she wants to come back either. So we are on the same page regarding that. She just wanted me to know that she was not out on any dates because she didn't want me to get the wrong idea and think that she was already going out with other people when it had only been three months since our wedding got called off. Anyway, we spoke to each other privately in a different part of the bar for a while and my friend waited for me because, of course, this was important. We talked about the wedding. She apologized for everything and she told me that what she had done was completely unnecessary. And she also agreed that she had been trying to sneak it onto me at a point where I wouldn't be able to do anything about it. She acknowledged that she had been wrong and she could have dealt with the situation better, especially given the fact that we had always been open and honest with each other when we were together. And I had always been respectful of what she had wanted. She ended up crying a bit and I got very emotional but at least we got everything out of the way. We parted ways, not as friends, but at least not enemies, if that makes sense. I guess this was the closure I needed. So I'm fine with stuff now and I'm ready to start a new chapter without the baggage of my past, I guess. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.